To overcome a life-threatening emergency, a surgical team needs to be calm, well-organised and, above all, experienced. But how do theatre staff gain that experience without putting patients at risk? Like any good team, they practice. This is our simulator suite, so um, it's a room that's a mocked up theatre, so we've got piped gases like you'd have in theatre, an anaesthetic machine, um, a theatre table, and we basically run mannequin based simulations. Some of the things that we practice are quite rare, so the only way to do it is to set up a simulation session like this, where you can simulate the effects of those things. I'm the anaesthetist who's anaesthetising at the moment, and then um, the new anaesthetist will come in and we'll hand over and then something will happen later on <laughs> and the patient will become unwell and they'll have to deal with it. So this is Paul, he's 26, okay. he was for an MUA, um, but anaesthetists quite often hand over mid-case so it's important that we can manage it effectively. Lovely. Okay? Yeah. Fabulous, thanks. thanks. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. There will be a critical incident which will be a drug reaction which, depending on what information they've got out of me, whether they've managed to get the information that this patient has an allergy to penicillin, so it's then about management of that particular reaction. Can I have some flu and Jen? Is it allergic to penicillin? Well, Ruth didn't say anything about uh, an allergy. I just checked the paper, so look. Penicillin. It should be all right. You sure? Yes. Tom's made a critical mistake. He's injected the patient with the very drug he's meant to avoid. And sure enough, the simulator starts to react accordingly. You seem to have some problems there. Yeah, I, I, I think this is probably anaphylaxis. Um, um, yeah. I'm just gonna, can you call the consultant, yeah. see if they're around? Can I continue? Just wait, I'll tell you when you can start again, okay? The situation evolves on the simulator just like it does in real life. The numbers on the monitor change just as they would in real life and you start to behave like you would as if it was real. And I think it does compare quite well to the real life situation. This simulation ends with the intervention of a consultant. I think we're going to have to just stop operating for a while now. We're going to have to stabilise him first and work out what's going on. And then I'm afraid... I think the patient will be happy about it. With filmed during the simulation itself um, and then the whole point of the debrief is that you go back and you watch what happened and you can see in real time exactly what you did and what you said. It allows you to sort of look at your behaviour and become aware of why you've acted in a certain way in a certain situation and if that's not the ideal thing to do, look at why you, how you can change it. OK. How did you think that, that handover went? Neither of us mentioned drug allergies, Ruth didn't mention any, I didn't ask. And I had looked at the chart and there weren't any mentioned on the chart, but perhaps I should have asked specifically, um, obviously in light of what happened, it would have been an important thing to know. Were you certain that he was allergic to blue penicillin? It was on the checklist. But you still went and got the drug? Yeah. So if you don't feel confident to challenge yourself, maybe get a senior ADP or another anaesthetist and say, look, this patient's got a documented drug allergy and this anaesthetist wants to give mm -hmm. a drug that I know they're allergic to. That when you're on the ward you can think back, right, what did we do in the simulator? This is what we did. Without that sort of mind-numbing terror of, oh my God, someone's dying, I don't know what to do. You think, I've been in this situation before, this is what I do. 